Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Richard Snyder uh, with Jim Crittenden. Uh, we're here at uh, the Janesville uh, Old Town Mall. Today is no, uh, December 7th at the first farmer's market they're holding here. And we're set up inside, washing the lower half of a double hung stained glass window from Oak Hill Chapel. Come on in and join us. window uh, that we removed from Oak Hill Chapel, the lower half of a double hung. Here we have the window that we took apart. Uh, in my studio, we removed all the lead, laid it out on the paper, cartoon or pattern, and we're going to mark each and every piece. It's been marked on the pattern, each piece. After you wash it and dry it, you put it back in its location. We do not change the way that this window was put together. We leave it the same. I like using the, the Pilot, the gold or the silver pens here. It stays on in water. And uh, it's a permanent marker that uh, after you get done building the window, it will come off. and. Uh, it's a very useful pen. We'll start here at the bottom. The reason you uh, mark these is that even though it's only 60 uh, or so pieces, they only fit one way and it's still a massive undertaking to try and fit it together if you don't have a plan. Each piece has been scribed around so you know exactly where it goes. No guesswork. Otherwise it's uh, almost impossible to put it together. And it's got to be the same way as the rest because they all need to match. I use this pen mainly because it's waterproof and after uh, submerging the pieces it stays on. A sharpie it says it's waterproof but it will wash off. It's like a puzzle. 
That's why you have to mark them all. Seventy pieces. I don't think I went over twice uh, any number, but they're all marked now, and uh, the identical piece will go in the di identical spot. Uh, the next step here would be to submerge the pieces and clean them one by one, scrape them, the edges, like this one for instance. You still have the glazing in the cement that needs to be cleaned off uh, to the original piece and you do that by uh, soaking it in water with uh, a Dawn detergent, very mild, and then scraping it and uh, drying it and replacing it onto your pattern. We've just uh, marked each piece here as you can see and they need to dry a few minutes so when we submerge it into the water with the soap they will not come off. Okay we're gonna start here in the corner. These all been numbered and we'll just well let me uh, put a little more soap in. I use Dawn soap, clear water. Just mix it up a little bit. We're gonna soak the glass more or less. Uh, anything with cement on it from the lead came. The tools that I use is a paint scraper, steel wool, very fine, flat, thin blade putty knife, and a soft bristle brush. And a stone, a very fine stone, for just scraping the edge uh, to remove the paint or the putty. You just take the piece and scrape off putty here. Let it soak a little longer here. One thing you want to be careful of is uh, not getting your pattern wet. I usually cover the pattern in uh, a clear plastic. We'll do the bottom half here. So you have a smooth surface here. And I let that soak for 10 minutes maybe just to soften up the cement or caulking that's on the window. There, we'll just wipe the extra cement that was on the glass away from your pattern. So you have a smooth surface here. And I let that soak for 10 minutes maybe just to soften up the cement or caulking that's on the window. Some of the history of the Oak Hill Chapel. Uh, in 1899 it was uh, built uh, mainly by the Oak Hill Association that also uh, the Knights of Pythias was uh, involved with. In fact uh, there was a memorial window by them 
that stated knights of Pythias that was probably uh, hand lettered and fired on uh, which is on the east front side of the chapel itself the very top window which was a 48 inch diameter we do not have a clue as to the design it was a rosette window and we've asked the community for uh, any information or photographs through the years that they could bring forward to us so we could restore uh, that window to the original uh, design. The original cost uh, in order to build the chapel from documentation uh, was $1,800 and the true cost came out to about 3000 uh, The local businesses and residents donated towards the construction and the local furniture company called uh, Ashcraft donated 60 upgraded uh, camp chairs is how he uh, stated the chairs and there are ten left that are in the chapel to this day. The organ uh, was uh, original that was uh, eventually bought by John Harry, uh, a resident of Janesville that used to work there part-time and bought it for five dollars in 1958 and is now in the process of loaning it back to the restored uh, chapel. The interior woodwork was all red birch, natural finish uh, in 1899 when they decided to build the, the chapel. The beams uh, on the ceiling were painted as well as all the paneling, the wainscot uh, paneling within the chapel interior was painted as well uh, through the years that would have to be all restored and refinished. Uh, we found the original front wood doors in the basement as well as parts of the fountain. The fountain uh, was a 10-foot base which is still in ground in front of the chapel. It was a three-tier fountain and uh, when we were in the basement we found the doors and the glass. We also found part of the fountain which was the top tier and uh, we would also like to replace that fountain in the restoration work. The windows, uh, we know they're 114 years old, the, the age of the chapel itself. We know little about that, only that uh, the architect of the chapel was Sutton Norris and the builder was John Knutson, both local uh, residents of Janesville. We're looking for the drawings of the chapel itself that may have information as to the glass studio and uh, also all the designs uh, that they had for each and every window that we can refer to. The outside porch, uh, the carriage porch, uh, was added in 1912 and the outside entrance to the basement was uh, added years later. The roof originally was uh, done in slate and through the years they've replaced it many times with asphalt. Okay, we're going to start to dry these pieces here then that uh, we just scraped and steel wool lightly. They're ready to be dried and then replaced on the cartoon. You have to be careful, the edges are razor sharp. As you can see, the number stayed. 
and we'll remove that later. The best cloth I like using is uh, for drying is flour sack cloth, towel, 100% cotton and very abs absorbent. Looks brand new after you clean it and get all the residue off from years of air elements uh, from moisture to just the impurities in the air. The elements. Yeah, we uh, put it in the clean water after the soapy and scraped it and uh, lightly steel wooled the paint uh, on the edge and any other cement that was on the edge cleaned them out each and every piece edges top and bottom and they look like they're brand new the numbers as you can see are still on to put back onto the cartoon in the right spots we dry each piece uh, with these soft towels and the excess water here now we're going to dump in the bucket to get rid of all of the grime and dirt of over a hundred years right there the traditional leaded glass which this is because it's leaded together is kind of a lost art and not a whole lot of people are even teaching it anymore because the new thing is fired glass this is a, a tedious time-consuming process uh, like I've stated in the past it's at least a 30-step process from start to finish if this wasn't laid out and drawn around each piece it would be difficult to put this back together And there it is, all clean, ready to be re-leaded, every piece. Just like the day they leaded it to start with.